Hey, what's up guys? Phoenix here, and this video is going to be another Yu-Gi-Oh! deck profile video, and this time there's going to be another Dragoonie deck profile for the post Ghost from the Past support that allows this deck to be a lot more competitively viable than it was before. And so what I'm going to be showing you today is a different philosophy on how you could build the deck to try and make it competitively viable. I showed you a deck list the previous week, last week, and that deck list is more built towards locals play, admittedly. It's a deck that is filled with combo pieces, very little cards that are actually tailored towards playing against the metagame or you know, respecting losing die rolls. It has a couple of cards in the main, but not too many. It's mainly focused around comboing as much as possible, having hands that are full of combo pieces and have as, having as many freeform combo paths as possible to get to your desired combo oriented results. But this deck is going to be built with a different philosophy where you've I've simplified the combos down to the core components that I know that I want to include, cut out a lot of the filler, a lot of the faff, uh, basically make the combos a little bit more linear in terms of how they function. They do still have some diverging paths, of course, but it's not just, ooh, you could do whatever you want because Dragoody cards. Um, and basically the deck has a lot more room for going second cards that are tailor picked for playing against the metagame if you were to lose the die roll. And this would be a deck list that I'd be playing at something that was like a seven or eight round event or more, a regional, YCS or whatever. Now, why am I showing you this now instead of holding it off for my own personal gain at any event that I wanted to enter with it? Well, there are no in-person events and I really just do not desire to you know do online play. I just have no passion for it. I really enjoy playing person to person. It's like the thing that I play this game for is the competitive nature of we're playing together. We both came to this event we have stuff invested in this and online events just don't do it for me now that's not to say i won't play in like something like the remote dual ycs but my desire to do so is very very minimal so there's no real like reason for me to keep any sort of secret deck list especially since i might not even be playing dragoonies at that if i entered it anyway because it's the first event i'll have actually entered in like over a year and i probably play something that's a bit more safe as a pick to play but Video that's coming out tomorrow after this video goes up is going to be a video about like basic Dragoonie combos that you should know. If you're interested in that and you don't want to miss it, make sure you subscribe if you're new here or just subscribe if you want to see more content from me in general in the future. If you like what you see, make sure to hit that subscribe button or if you are already subscribed, make sure you hit that like button. Let me know that I'm doing things right and that you're enjoying the content that you are seeing. It definitely lets me know to keep doing what I'm doing and start doing it more consistently. But anyway, deck list is as follows. It is a 43 card main deck with a bunch of going second cards in it. Uh, and an optimized core engine. So, two copies of Senatus and one copy of Dragoonity Ducks. Uh, these are your core normal summons. Uh, I hate this card in terms of what it like means for the deck, uh, but I have to play it to keep the percentages up for opening starter cards because this is a starter card in its own right. Um, I wish I could just play two copies of Ducks instead of this card or Ducks in another Legatus or just some other extender or something, but every time I try to test that, like... <laughs> The deck just gets so much worse in terms of like what hands are playable and because this deck is like not a tier one deck uh, you have to make sure your hands are playable as much as possible so two senatus is a concession not something that I really enjoy playing but I have to concede to playing it to keep percentages of starter cards up right but I, like the card is good I just don't like the the things that it implements in terms of what you have to combo with after you've used it. But for Wing Beast Extenders, one Zephyros, one Legatus, and two copies of Mist Valley Baby Rock. Uh, I wish I was playing more copies of Legatus, but it's really only needed for like the Remus combo anyway. Uh, so one is just fine because this deck is sort of built around the Remus combo anyway. So like, anytime you open Ravine or Remus, you're just going to re like Ravine for the Remus and then do the combo that way. Um, this deck does have other ways to combo as well and other like card combinations but the main thing this deck is focusing on is one card remus combos that get augmented by like one other card in your hand being a specific card to allow you to do something else but carrying on for big dragons that are being played one copy of mistleton because glow searches it and glow is searchable and it's not really that great of an extender one copy of tempest because we want to turn gold sark into a card that searches either tuners or remus for dragon ravine and then playing red eyes darkness metal dragon because it is strictly superior to Leviton in all of the very isolated combos that revolve like around very few cards being put into the combo. Um, like Leviton has other implications and interactions that it can do, but in terms of if I have to cut one of them, Leviton is unfortunately the card that has to be cut to make room for cards like going second cards and other like consistency enablers. Uh, Red Med is just a superior card because if you draw it, you can just summon Tempest or like a tuner from deck keep comboing like normal like nothing ever happened it even functions as an extender where Leviton, if you draw it functions as a brick it's like it's bricky by nature whereas red med actually has 
an extension purpose if you were to draw it. Uh, it's better for the combos because it uses Gaydurg more times, which means you're fueling your graveyard more. Uh, so in terms of optimizing combo routes down, this is the one that beats out Leviton. So, uh, I mean, like, I wish I was still playing Leviton, but like I said, if cards have to be cut, one of the first ones on the chopping block are the ones that are certified bricky by nature, and that is Leviton. Uh, but carrying on for tuners, for Dragon Tuners, three copies of Remus, because obviously you're going to play three of a card that says Add Dragon Ravine. And then three copies of Phalanx and two copies of Coos. Uh, now, I was considering playing two Phalanx, two Coos, and I was testing that for a while, but I eventually just went back up to three Phalanx. The card I was playing instead of the third Phalanx was the third copy of Odd Eyes Revolution Dragon because I did end up cutting that down. Uh, but basically, these cards like augment your Remus hands uh, very, very well because they allow you to start the play in a different way. Like You want to be opening Ravine Tuner. Ravine Tuner is always the combo. It doesn't matter what tuner it is. Ravine Remus? Nuts. Ravine Phalanx? Nuts. Ravine Coos? Nuts. You, you, like, you may think that Ravine Remus is redundant. No, it's not. You use Ravine, discard the Remus, add the card anyway. Uh, like, you don't need to discard Remus for Ravine. It'll summon itself back. Like, or to add Ravine, rather. Uh, it'll uh, summon itself back to the board. Like, you can use it to gather resources. Any form of opening Ravine plus a tuner is nuts. So you want to, like, you're incentivized to playing more of the tuners because those are, the like, the full, full combo hands. Like, Ravine plus Phalanx or Ravine plus Goose is the like the full combo of like normal summon ducks and go into two negates spheres goliath lechery um so like you definitely want to be playing those you want to be able to play those at like a high enough count um i was considering playing one coos uh, and cutting one but uh you need to play two because if you open one it turns it into a garnet uh because you need to be able to summon uh coos off of needle fiber mid combo in the in the uh, ducks combo uh so if you opened ravine coos suddenly that combo is not accessible to you anymore if you're not playing the second coos uh, so that's why I wouldn't be playing three flanks, one coos. Uh, we're, we're definitely three and two in this household. This household, we're trying to combo. But two copies of Eyes Revolution Dragon because I had to cut the third copy for uh, just, you know, other things. And then uh, Lechery Goliath because this is, like, the win condition. You're trying not to lose to all these powerful spells in the game. Uh, the, like, the, the ending boards that you end on are not going to be negating these power spells that all these decks are playing, like Dark Ruler, Super Poly, and all that sort of stuff, until you put Lechery out there. So you could easily go for the Dragon Buster route of playing this deck, and if you were doing that, you would put uh, Dragon Buster instead of Lechery, and you would uh, uh, play Leviton instead of Goliath, so that you can combo into Leviton equip Dragon Buster. But ultimately, like the big reason to play Dragoonity over Dragon Link, if there is any reason to do so, is the fact that this deck doesn't lose to the same card Dragon Link does as soon as you implement these cards into your main deck. Uh, you get a stronger ending board that loses to none of the cards that Dragon Link is currently losing to, those being cards like Droplet, Super Poly, and Dark Ruler. Um, so, like, that's just why these are played. And like I said, uh, just had to cut this for space. I still wish I could play three of it. I've entertained the thought of going to 45 cards and putting the uh, second, the third Revolution Dragon back in, uh, as well as a, a second copy of either Legacy or, like, Glow or something. I've entertained that thought, but... I've got to, like, be reasonable and keep it, like, as close to 40 as possible. And for me, that number is 43. Uh, but carrying on, playing a lot of hand traps. Uh, three copies of Ash Blossom, two copies of Fantastical Dragon Phantasme, and then two copies of Nibiru, the Primal Being. Uh, these are being played alongside also playing Dark Ruler in the deck. So it's 10 going second cards. We are very well equipped to play second, like, going second versus Dragon Link and some other decks. Basically... This card is really good in a whole host of matchups. It is situationally bad in some points, as well as being situationally good, but it's a blowout card, so it's like it's one of those cards that definitely seems worth it. Uh, Ash Blossom is goaded. That card is an insane hand trap because it just hits so many cards. And then Phantasme is really good against Dragon Link as well as some other niche applications uh, because, like, dra against Dragon Link, it just says draw four <laughs> and try to draw into Ash or Nibiru or Dark Ruler uh, and see if you get there. And... Spoiler alert, usually you do. Even if you don't, you sculpt the perfect hand to play through Savage Seal Tidying. Uh, so, like, that's also good, especially since Phantasme itself outs Tidying. Um, so, like, pretty nice, if I do say so myself. But that's all the monsters. That's 29 monsters for spells. Three copies of Dragon Ravine, one copy of Other Dragon Ravine, one copy of Other Other Dragon Ravine, and then three copies of Pot of Prosperity. These are the consistency spells. Uh, Prosperity is like super good in this deck because you're always banishing three. You can always do any form of full combo with 12 cards in your extra deck. 
there's always a, a three card combination you can banish that is going to uh, give you the ability to get uh, just duality for a combo piece. Um, but also, there is a specific combo you can do in this deck where if you need to Prosperity for six to make sure you see Remus or Dragon Ravine in order to actually be able to play and win the game, you can banish six. There's a specific six cards in your extra deck you can banish that you can banish those, and then if you get Remus or Ravine off of Prosperity, you can combo into a Reed Bear, Savage Dragon, Spheres. Uh, so like, that's like not a terrible board in terms of like what you can, like considering the alternative is nothing, <laughs> right? <laughs> considering the alternative is you didn't get to play anything. That's a very good board. Uh, so like the fact that this combo, this deck is like built around like that sort of optimization level as well, where you can banish six off prosperity is very nice. I like it very much, but for powerful one ofs, one glow, one lance and one monster reborn. Uh, these are just really good extenders. If you draw one, you search the other one off of Romulus. Um, I wish I was playing more copies of glow, but I mean, it is what it is. It's searchable. So again, it's one of those cards that's just an instant cut down to minimal quantities. If you're trying to fit going second cards in and monster reborn is here because this card is actually better in terms of utility than the third copy of revolution dragon would be. Um, because like this card can do things like monster reborn, red eyes, darkness, metal dragon and stuff, uh, as well as like monster reborn tuners. If like something happens to like Baylor, if it gets negated or whatever, uh, it's just like the purest extender and like it, it hits all the same like beats of like what it can do as a card as revolution dragon can, but it can just hit more cards and be better utility wise long run. But last three cards in the main deck, three copies of dark ruler, no more. These are the 8th, 9th, and 10th going 2nd card. We're just trying to draw into these off Phantasmate. We're just drawn to them naturally. We're trying to beat things like Winda, Dragon Link, uh, all that sort of stuff. Uh, it's a very, very, very nice uh, spread of going 2nd cards that I'm actually a big fan of. But extra deck, Gaederg, Vajrayana. Playing Vajrayana specifically because uh, normal summoning ducks into a level 8 is relevant for the combo where you can banish 6 off Prosperity and still be able to combo with the remaining 9 in your extra deck. Uh, Luin is not needed as soon as you're not running Dark Worm or Leviton. It's like all those applications stop being things that are that matter. Uh, so Vajrayana is the better card uh, to be playing in the slot because it's a non-tuner, whereas Luin is a tuner, so you can't synchro climb with it. Uh, one Barka, one Crystal Wing Synchro Dragon, one Borlet Savage Dragon, and one Dragoon Knight Reed Bear. I cut Ascalon because it literally never gets made. <laughs> it literally never gets summoned. Uh, and anytime it is getting summoned, you usually are just in such a position where you're like losing anyway, uh, because like you had to summon that. Um, like these cards are just like the card that you can play instead of Ascalon comes up a lot more, and that is just a different another copy of a Link, so you can Link climb effectively and then still be able to end on spheres uh, after making uh, Link Zone Room. But one copy of a Tum because this card's goaded, this card's nuts, uh, instant Dragoonity staple ever since day one that it was printed, big nice. Uh, but for links, Romulus, uh, Halka Fibrax, uh, I would love to be able to cut this, but it just makes the Ravine Phalanx or Ravine Coos combos far too good, uh, because of the fact that you can just step up into it and it's an extender while you're stepping up into it and making link zones. Uh, so I wish I could just not play this card, but, and like play something else in its place, but until it's like banned or whatever, I have to play it. Um, two copies of Hyrax Seal. Uh, sometimes you make one to make uh, Link Zones for Guard Dragons and then you link it away and so you need to make the other one. This is what this uh, Ascalon was cut for because like, I would like to be able to end on this as many times as possible. Uh, and then alternatively there are some like follow up turns where you can just end on this again like to like seal the game further out uh, of your opponent's reach. But Pisty LP for Guard Dragons and then Triple Burst and uh, Dark Spell Dragon of Dark Steel for utility links for uh, arrow placement and for finishing out certain combos that uh, you need an extra card for that you wouldn't be able to end on spheres with, right? But, so that is the extra deck. And now for the side deck, the side deck has changed a little bit from the previous build I showed you because since we're main decking cards that are good against Dragon Link and a couple other matchups, we can actually alter the cards in the side deck a bit to be better targeted for specific things because of the fact that we're not having to side deck a bunch of blowout cards because we lack going second cards in the main deck. But so, for the side deck, three copies of Droll and Lockbird. Uh, this card is obviously really good. Uh, it's nuts. It's just a floodgate that lingers. So, why would we not play it? Uh, but two copies of Lightning Storm, one copy of Feather Duster, two copies of Twin Twister, and one copy of Red Reboot. So the Twin Twisters are in instead of the Evenlies because these actually are good against like cards like Shadal Schism and stuff in those matchups. Um, so like 
the fact that we don't have to play evenly to like hit other decks that we weren't main decking for previously, we can actually play more cards that are better targeted for the control matchups. Like being able to hit Schism with this card is nuts. Um, and like the discard is like not really that big of a deal. You're going second. You're you should be able to like do something like discard a tuner, fuel your Barca more. Uh, so like that's why I'm playing Twin Twister over a card like uh, Cosmic Cyclone. Uh, but Red Reboot is obviously Red Reboot, and the other three uh, cards are blue. It's in their own right. I'm sorry. Ooh, I don't know what that was. Um, a just little heave. Anyway, one copy of Amorphage Greed, uh, because you side this against like the trap decks, because Lechery has less uh, reach, whereas this has better reach. And then we're just playing cards to make the deck better in sided games when we know we are going first. The Call by the Grave is here, because I could not fit it into the main deck. Uh, without going uh, like further away from 40. And then a Pointer of the Red Lotus is a card that I'm actually really liking. Now that the deck doesn't have to make sure it like... Now that the deck uh, like has a lot of space to side deck specifically for matchups, a Pointer of the Red Lotus is a card that I'm really, really enjoying over what I was previously playing in these slots, which is Solemn Judgment. Uh, basically, like the only way that people are going to break your board with like the Goliath Lechery stuff going on is if they're side decking things like Lava Golem, Sphere Mode, or Kaiju or whatever and they draw them. Or like Dinos is a surprisingly hard matchup for this deck because yeah they have to hard draw Misk but if they do hard draw Misk that eats two negates by itself because you have to negate the hand effect or else all their Dinos on board are going to be free reign to do whatever and you have no knowledge of what they could have in their hand. And you have to negate the graveyard effect because otherwise they're just going to like summon something and like, you're, basically the graveyard effect baits a negate by itself regardless of what you're negating. You're either negating the graveyard effect, or you're negating like the archer sword they summon, or you're negating the baby they popped off archer sword, like whatever. Like you're, you're having to negate something, right? So a pointer is actually like really good, unironically against dinos, because dino is the deck that, without spells, has the highest chance of breaking your board. Uh, even though it has to draw some specific cards in order to do that, um, through the amount of negates you have, it's still one of those things that like I definitely side a pointer in that matchup because I'm just gonna a pointer and I'm gonna see the hand, I'm gonna see that there's a misc there, and I'm gonna get rid of that misc during like the standby phase before they can activate it. And now they physically cannot win, right? Uh, or even in hands where you do not get to um, where you do not get to uh, like lechery, if for some reason you can't get to lechery, but you can get to Goliath. Uh, this is a card you can use, you look at your opponent's hand, take the Dark Ruler out of it. Uh, or, alternatively, if you didn't get to Lechery, this is something that has happened before in testing. Uh, if you get to let if you can't get to Lechery, but you get to Goliath and a board in the gates, and, like, it's a pointer, you flip a pointer, and if they have Droplet or Super Poly, they have to use it immediately. Meaning that it's going to resolve, and they've either discarded a bunch of cards for Droplet, or they discarded a card for Super Poly, and then you get to look at what's left in their hand and take the starter card out of it so they can't play, right? Uh, so it's like, it's really good uh, in multiple different facets of play. Uh, so I really like a pointer right now, specifically because like a pointer lost a lot of value in other decks because of cards like Droplet and Super Poly and stuff like being uh, like as playable as they are because those can just be chained to the pointer. So the pointer is not solving the problem. But in this deck, mainly lechery is locking you out of losing to those cards so a pointer then just takes like the best card out of their hand or like if they're citing cards like lava golem kaijus or sphere mode for some reason and those are cards that they have in their hand then you can just take those as well so it just uh it just benefits you more and makes your uh matchups work even more in your favor but that is this deck list so let me know what you guys think in the comments down below as always uh if you're interested in talking about this deck in further detail or seeing other discussions that have been had about this deck uh there's a link to my discord page in our discord server rather not page sound like an old man my discord server in the description down below of this video as well as every other video that has come out recently if you're interested definitely go check that out but other than that like i said like this video subscribe if you're new here and want to see more content like this and content about other decks i definitely need to be more consistent with uploads and all that sort of jazz because I definitely need to get back on the grind and make content that I'm actually proud of and enjoy doing again and like Dragoonie is one of those like decks that is funnily enough a content canon right now so I can actually do stuff with it but other than that thanks for your time thanks for watching guys thanks for sticking around and man it's so weird to be making Dragoonie content in 2021 right I've been a slave to this deck for 10 years <sighs> feels bad man but anyway Thanks for watching, as I've already said. Thanks for your time as usual, guys, and take care. I will see you 
in the next video.